Richard's Guitar Studio and today we're going to do the song Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. The tabs are linked in the description. Go ahead and open those up. You're going to need them uh, to follow along with the lesson. I'll refer to them as we go. That'll to make it a little bit easier while you're doing that. For you Northeasterners, I got my Wawa coffee. Pumpkin spice. Tis the season. Mm, that's good. Okay. So now that you have that up, section A is... Uh, the first chord just kind of gets repeated over and over again for the intro. And that chord is your second finger on the low E string, third fret. First finger on the A string, second fret. And you're just going to strum that for two measures. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And that's it. Alright. What I do is I also use my first finger to dampen the D, G, B, and E strings just in case, so that they don't make any extra noise if my pick goes too far. But I try to keep my pick local to those two strings. I don't want to overdo it. So then you get to section B, and this is the main riff. Um, if you look at the tabs, there's a, there's a tie in the middle of it. We're, gonna, we're not going to do that tie yet. We're going to put that in after, all right? Um, that way it's easier, it's easier to teach and learn it, and then, then you do that later. So... The first two measures of section B sound like this. All right, so the chords here are the first one we just did, the second finger, low E, third fret, first finger, second fret on the A string. And now you play that one 12 times, it's one and a half measures. It's like one and two and three and four and one and two and... Then you're going to move over to this chord, your third finger on the 5th fret, low E string, first finger on the 3rd fret of the A string, and you hit that three times. It looks like a backwards power chord. Then you're going to jump down and grab your second finger on the A string and hit low E open for an E power chord. Alright, so that last little movement there is 5 and 3. So an E power chord. So the first two measures of that whole thing, uh, or sorry, of, of uh, part B, sound like this. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Alright. So once you have that, then we're going to stay on that second finger, on the low E, and we're going to do that for um, almost one and a half measures. It's going to be this, one and two and three and four and one and two. So that's uh, what, 11 times total. Then your second finger stays where it is, and you add your first finger to the first fret of the low E. And you hit this, this chord twice. It's a pretty ugly chord, it's called a tritone. Then you lift the second finger off so that you have your first finger and open the A together that three times. So the end of the line is this tritone two times, then you lift the second finger and hit it three times. But what I'm doing there is I'm landing my pick on the D string like that, just that way it doesn't accidentally hit too many strings. I'm just going and landing the pick there, kind of stopping it on that string. So section B, um, the last two measures of section B, starting on this E power chord, goes like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So the entire part B sounds like this. <clears throat> So if you're looking at the tabs, 
there's a tie from the end of the second measure into the first measure, or I'm sorry, into the third measure of part B. So what you're going to do is you're just going to, you're going to count beat one, but you're just not going to play it. You could even just like hit the air. <coughs> stop the pick. And basically what that's going to do is create a longer note, right, because you tied two together. So the way that part B sounds with the tie thrown in there is this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four. So that is the verse. So that kind of keeps repeating. And then right before the chorus, I have an arrow there on the tab where it says stop on this chord before the chorus. So what you're going to do is you're going to play one and a half measures of this first chord, this G, -ish, G chord, and it's going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and stop. And that's when she sings since you've been gone really high, which I can't do. I can't sing that. Sorry. <laughs> So, uh, just as a side note, parts C and D are lead guitar parts that are sort of overdubbed behind that. So if you have a, a second guitarist and you want to add this stuff in, this is what you can do. Letter C sounds like this. So it has this very similar rhythm. So it's the fourth fret on the third string, then the fifth fret, back to four, then to two. Those are the notes. So you're gonna go one, two, second fret, just the last three eighth notes there of that measure. Letter D is that little uh, high note that kind of keeps coming back and uh, on beats two and four. So it's like one, two, three, four, you'll hear that in there. And what that is, that high E string, fifth fret, doesn't matter which finger you use, and it's rest, two, rest, four, rest, two, rest, four, rest, two, rest, four, like that. So that's pretty easy overdub to learn. But normally I just play part B, which is the verse part. I just do that one, you know, as, as uh, the song progresses. progresses. So then we have the chorus, which is on the next page, section E. It sounds like this. So that's the chorus. And <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to start off with a power chord on the A string, 2nd fret, D string, 4th fret, and you're going to play that four times. Then you're going to slide it up one fret to 3 and 5 and hit it three times. Then you're going to stay on that same fret and go to the low E string, 3 and 5. And you just strum eighth notes for the next measure. So the first two measures of part E go like this. The next two measures repeat them. So there you go. So the first four measures of the chorus, like this. Then you're going to do pretty much the same thing, except for in start, instead of starting on the 2nd and 4th fret, you're going to move up to the A string 7th fret, D string 9th fret, and you're going to play the open E string along with it. So it's open, 7, 9. 
you can hit that four times. One, two, three, four. And then you go back and do the same thing here on the third fret of the A string. Third fret on the low E string. That's all that. So uh, if you're looking at the tabs, measures 15 and 16 in part E. Sounds like this. Alright, so if we put all that together, um, starting in section E, it sounds like this. part of the, the chorus here, notice I have two um, different options. I, I just do the top option, but if, if you're having trouble reaching this chord down here we're going to get to, then you can jump down and learn the, the optional notes that I, that I put down there. But I'm going to teach you the, the top line. So measure 17, low E string, 5th and 7th fret, and it's uh, just one measure. And you get down to open and 2. This is the, the one I was talking about. Your first finger on the second fret, low E. Pinky on the A string, fifth fret. And you're gonna do that for a measure. And then you go back to your five and seven and hit a whole note. All right, so the last section there of part E, measure 17, sounds like this, five and seven. through the whole chorus, section E sounds like this. parts B and E down, the verse and the chorus, you have most of the song. Alright, All right. so section F is another, uh, in the second verse, this is another overdub that you can do if you want to play the lead guitar parts. Um, and it sounds like this is up on the uh, G string, 12th fret, and then later there's one note on the 14th fret, same string. So those are the two notes, 12 and 14. And it sounds like this. So for this one, instead of counting out the rhythms, just try to follow along with I'm, what I'm doing. I'll play it twice more and just do your best to keep rhythm with me. Here we go. Two, three, four. make it staccato all I'm doing I'm playing the note and my pick is just stopping the string preparing for the next note all right so that's an optional second verse lead guitar part then we have part G this is the bridge you'll notice here I have many options what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the top version I'm not gonna play the notes in parentheses you can try to add those later for an extra like reach, my guitar went out of tune. So you can add that later for an extra reach if you'd like. Um, and then the bottom part is just a different way to do the chords in the open position. I'm going to keep going with the power chords though. So it's uh, the A string, 3rd fret, and the D string, 5th fret, power chord. This goes for a measure. Then you're going to slide that up to 7 and 9, same strings, and this time you're going to add the low E again with it. Then we go right back to 3 and 5. Then, same frets, low E string. Alright, so that first line of letter G, this is on the last page, sounds like this. That's 
the first half of the bridge. The second part of it um, does almost the same thing. We start here on the A string, third fret, D string, fifth fret again, power chord, one measure. Then you're gonna go back to the seventh and ninth fret here. And instead of playing the chord, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lightly touch the top of the strings with the first and third finger and you're not going to press the strings down, you're just going to touch the top of them. And instead of playing in between the frets, you're going to play over top of the frets and try to get a harmonic sound. Alright, what I do is I lay my first finger across the other strings. Alright, so you're just kind of touching the top of the string. You could also try to just like hold some fingers around that 7th fret and make some noise that way. But what I try to do is hold my 1st finger and 3rd finger over those 7th and ninth fret wire, the actual fret piece, and make that sound. Okay. So it'll go like this, from 3 and 5, slide up, like that. And then all you do is go back to 3 and 5 for 2 more measures. So I'll do that second half of the bridge again all together. That's measure 27. It sounds like this. Three and five. All right. The whole bridge through part G starting on measure 23 sounds like this. A overdub behind the bridge, so it's the, uh, the bridge part, uh, section G. So it's the third string, seventh fret, and the eighth fret on the second string, B. So seven and eight, and you can just that just goes the whole the whole time through that part. Then we have I. This is sort of like a transition back, um, and you have this little riff that goes like this. So this is a little riff that helps get back into the verse. And what it is, is the A string, 2nd fret, 3 times, 3rd fret, and then you have two kind of like muted notes. You could do it on one string if you want. Like that. And then you're going to go up to the 10th fret on that same string and go... Put it together. And you can make it nice and slidey, like kind of sloppy with sliding back and forth. Um, and then the last time you do it, it just stops on the 10th fret. It doesn't get, go like, it just goes, and then there's a rest. So. So I'll play it one more time slowly. Do that three times and then on the last time. Okay. <clears throat> last part is section J. And all this is is an extension of the chorus. You already know this stuff. It's just at the very end it has this like extended long chorus. So there's a repeat sign in there. Um, and I'll play letter G, letter J, I'll just play the first two lines. Then you repeat. Okay, 
so the difference here is when you go to this fifth fret, if you remember the chorus, instead of going here and then this thing and then this thing back there, you're just going to do five and seven on the low E string. A string 7, D string 9, E string open. And then it sort of doubles back and, and does the chorus again. All right? So it'll sound like this. that we just did. Then you're going to jump down for this stretch chord, 2 and 5. And then A minor chord. So let me break that down. Measure 43. We're on the last two lines of the song. So after you've done that uh, repetition of the chorus, uh, where it kind of doubles back and, and starts over, you're going to go to this 5th and 7th fret on the low E. Open 7 9. Then your stretch 2 and 5. And then instead of going to the power chord up here, we're going to actually do an A minor chord. And they do open 2 2 1. You don't really need the, the high E for this one. Alright, so you can either dampen it or leave it out or like that. Then you lift your first finger off. For an open B. This is measure 46 and 47. A minor, that's an open 2-2-1 two, two, on the middle strings. And then lift the first finger, play open B. Then you, you can go back to this chord, the very first chord, 3 and 2. some feedback in the background. Um, what I like to do is grab that note that's in parentheses. It's three, two, and then you have a fourth fret here, and then you dampen the D string. You just dampen that, that one. So it's like three, two, dampen, four, and it goes like this. And then I'll reach over and I'll actually grab this third fret like that on the, on the B string. It's kind of a weird chord to hold, but at the end, uh, if I try to get it as authentic sounding as possible, that's that's how you want to do it. So uh, I'm going to do the entire letter J, that was a lot, so I'm going to play through it uh, with the repeat and then we'll be done for today. So here's uh, letter J. with that one try to put all that stuff together um, any questions put them in the comments some more Wawa coffee here we'll talk to you later